but yeah, that's that's what I've been playing. Your character is like money amorous. As long as you got money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You poor, don't come here. Yeah. Yeah. As as I, I do other chivalrous activities, right? I fight bandits. I save babies and dogs and stuff like that, right? Oh, you're saving them now instead of killing them? In this game, I save them. That's crazy. In, in Crusader Kings, there is, there is a different path I take. <laughs> that is true. In this one, I save them. Hello and welcome to level 101 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. The gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy, here with my compadre, the David. What up? What is up? How are you doing this fine evening? Doing all right. We're starting the numbers all over. We're Back starting it. One. And, and, and uh, five, you're like a dream come true. For I for, I forgot what it was, it, but then it started back at one, right? We're starting back at one. Kinda. That's right. Yeah. In a sense. Uh, in a sense, yes. Um, yeah. So you're doing good. Yeah. Good. You doing good? good. Doing good. Doing good. All right. It's glad to hear. Yeah. Hopefully, all the listeners out there in listener land. I'm saying that like it's. 1990 i don't know i guess i'm just throwing it out there uh everyone that's tuning in ladies and gentlemen chickens ducks and hens hope you're all having a fantastic night evening morning day whenever you're listening to us hope that everything's doing good i hope and wish for good luck and that the odds will be ever in your favor that is a what is it called that movie callback Mm -hmm. that i'm sure my partner would appreciate but i can't Mm -hmm. remember the movie so maybe not hunger games uh, there's a hunger game called okay yeah. Um, I I never watched. Did you ever see? Did you ever watch? Uh, they're they are actually amazing movies. I've watched them all at least a couple times. Yeah, I do enjoy them. I haven't watched the new one though. Ah, I'm yeah, for it to come out on something that I don't have to pay for. Last year came out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Either that or early, early this year. Right. Yeah. I do not remember. Yeah, I think it was like last year. It came out like not exactly that same time, but a little bit after like the whole Barbie Oppenheimer type thing that happened, you know? I, I believe you're correct. Yeah, yeah. Barbie, great movie. It was. It was. It's Ryan Gosling good. killed it. Just Dude, killed he, it. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I guess that's enough Gosling love for for this episode, which was just literally a sentence. Let's uh <laughs> Let's talk about games. Let's talk about the games. Oh, yeah, that's why we're here. Yeah, that's why we're here. Let's talk about the games that we've been playing before we jump into our topics. Um, David, did you want to go this time, or do you want me to take the, the yeah, lead on I'll this go. one? Okay. Okay, so as we know, I downloaded Dead by Daylight again, and yes. I'm you know way behind. They've released quite a few new uh, DLCs, and... I surprisingly had some currency left over from when I played before. So instead of paying with money, I could just buy some in like in the online shop that they have. Mm -hmm. And I got the Cenobite from Hellraiser. And I got one of their own. um, I forgot what they call her, but she like deals with the crows in the game. Okay. And... Dude, the Cenobite is really hard. Like, yeah. they give you a difficulty on the killers of how hard and easy it is to, you know, deal with them. Mm-hmm. The, the his is the first one that is actually hard. Yeah. Like, you can you can uh, throw out this thing, and when you hit control, you teleport to that thing, and you control these chains that come out of it. Yeah, controlling those chains are very difficult. Yeah. That's half the kit, and if you're not good with the kit like <laughs> I am, man, these people are just running you easy. Yeah. The crow one was really cool. You can like set a line of crows, and then when you're whenever you want, you can hit control, and then it launches the crows. So like what I would do is I would uh, hook somebody, and then I would set the crows, and then as soon as I see them getting unhooked, I would throw the crows so it would catch one of them, <laughs> and it shows you where the survivor is. Mm-hmm. So I've been I've been playing that a lot. Okay. That's what I've been playing. Okay, back to before because you were temporary exiled by your one tribe, so you've returned to I, the other tribe. I guess I have problems. Yeah. I need to go where I've been, well, I guess. Yeah, okay. <laughs> or back to you? those that understand you. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Yeah, as far as games, so let's see. The one that I'm, I have. Let's get this out of the way. Every once in a while, I return the Madden, right? Because I need mm -hmm. dumb things to shut my brain off to when I'm processing stuff. So I played a little bit of that, just a little bit of it. I've dived back into playing some of The Sims mm -hmm. because every once in a while I get a Sims itch, mm -hmm. and so I'm going back to playing The Sims. Um, and again, it's fun. It is what it is. There's rumors of maybe they're gonna have, they have a new one coming out. That'd be cool. So The Sims four specifically let me specify it's four not my favorite but it's good um and then i've also played a tiny tiny bit of, of fable too still um i okay. want to dive back into it and finish building i gotta go log back in again i'm pretty sure in fable 2 they have the instance where you can you can buy real estate so you can buy shops you can buy houses you can rent the houses out or you can live in the houses um, and when you're not logged in, time goes by, you accumulate the money, much like an eat venture, right? Mm -hmm. You're not logged in, the money accrues. So, you know, it's nice to log into Fable 2 every once in a while and just see, I don't know, quarter mil just <laughs> hit just hit your bank account. You know what I'm saying? And right. you're like, oh yeah, let me buy a couple of more businesses, raise the rent 60%, and then the next time I log in, it'll be half a mil hitting my my my, my wallet when I Sounds log like in. America. You know? It is America. Fable is, though it is very British, it is as American as you can possibly get. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or maybe it's as British as you can get. British, like I think, like started the exploitation of it all in the pursuit of money. But yes, I've been playing some Fable 2 and enjoying that. This time, um, I mostly play a guy in Fable 2. I've been playing a lady in this one. Ooh. And it's cool. Because, you know, it, Fable 2 also has like attractions. Like you can date and get married and have and have a family, right? And okay. all of that is also affected by sexual orientation, right? Which is very progressive for a game that came out 15 some odd years ago. So if you're like courting someone, like I'm a woman, I can be courting a man that has no has no desire for women, right? Um, and so, or, and I can be approached by a woman that fancies me. She's like, hey, you know, you want to get together and shag? And then of course my character, you know, me being me, I'm saying, oh, no, I can't. You're too poor. So um, <laughs> that's not going to work. You need to have a little more money. Because, again, I got I got a quarter mil hitting my bank account. I can't be with someone that ain't got no cheddar. You got to have a little bit of cheddar. But, yeah, that's that's what I've been playing. Your character is like money amorous. As long as you got money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You poor, don't come here. Yeah. Yeah, as as I, I do other chivalrous activities, right? I fight bandits, I save babies and dogs and stuff like that, right? Oh, you're saving them now instead of killing them? In this game, I save them. That's crazy. In, in Crusader Kings, there, there is a different path I take. That is true. <laughs> in this one, I save them. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I've been playing. So um, I guess I can I can jump into my my uh, topic because I'm jumping. It, it jumps a little bit off of off this franchise so to speak yeah, let's um hear it. so very very upfront keep it like a blunt question of i'll get the question and they get give the context have you ever have you ever had a flop this is the question have you ever had a flop now this is where that that question stems from i mentioned the fact that i'm playing fable 2 right mm. fable 2 is from a mechanic standpoint, my favorite fable, right? From a story standpoint, I think the first one is still the best. So okay. I love fable one. I love fable two. Hate three. Three is the flop. Everyone was looking for looking to uh, uh, forward uh, for fable to fable three, and it came out, and the spirit of it just wasn't the same. A lot of the mechanics didn't work the same. The story was a little heh, right? It, it the the conceit of Fable Three is that like you actually become a king or queen, and you can do kingly or queenly things, and you can kind of do it at the end. But the way the mechanic works, it's it there's not much of a payoff for it, right? Got it. So that was a huge flop, Fable Three. It's there's really nothing redeeming about it, and so that's part of why it's a flop. There's nothing really redeeming. I can do one and two and leave three. I don't need it at all, right? Um, but again, it's, okay. it's the idea of, I talked before, like with, like with the Mandalore games and other things, 
having so much hype for something. Mm-hmm. And it not just there's there's I've played other games that maybe have maybe done worse as far as their execution. So Anthem comes to mind, right? Mm-hmm. One could look at Anthem and say that was maybe a, a, a bigger commercial dud or flop. And it might be. But for me personally, as a gamer, Fable 3 is a way bigger flop. I mean, I bought Anthem on sale for 20 bucks not long after it came out, and I felt like I wasted my money. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't imagine people that were hyped that spent 60, 70, 80, 100 dollars on it, what it was like. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Fable, Fable 3 is a flop for me. And then another one I'll give, and then I'll I'll want to hear some of yours. Uh another one is um Assassin's Creed Unity. Now, oh. Assassin's Creed Unity. I think that's the one that takes place during the French Revolution. A f- super interesting era in time to to like go and be an assassin in. Yeah, people still reference that. Because the game know? didn't work. Because the game was broke, David. It was just mm-hmm. broke. There's there's infamous screenshots of the faces of your character, and it's something out of a nightmare. <laughs> there's just there's nothing. There's a black <laughs> void, and there's eyes, and there's a, and there's lips, and there's teeth. And there's nothing, and it broke in all the time. But this was the hypest I'd been for an Assassin's Creed. This, this was the culmination. This was supposed to be it. We had Assassin's Creed 3 that took place during the American Revolution. Oh, we're going to, oh, Unity? Oh, we're going to the French Revolution? This is going to be cool, right? It was an absolute disaster and a flop. It is the yeah. Assassin's Creed that almost killed the franchise. At least it put it in a hiatus. They came out with Syndicate not long after, and then mm-hmm. that it was in the shadow of unity uh syndicate and rogue it was in the shadow of unity so they had to take it down for a year or two they came back with origins and now they've kind of done a a, a right set setting it right on the right path going forward but unity what a flop call. it's crazy man and I, the game it has to be a, if you if you release a game that almost kills your franchise it's a flop right it's a flop right so that should kind of made me think of another one I'm I'm curious if one you say is one that I'm thinking of as far as flops go. You want me to go? Yeah, yeah, more? yeah, yeah. Okay, so one of them that I feel personally is uh, the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two. Mm, so yeah. they said that the, you know it was going to be a remake, pretty much, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, feature a lot of the old stuff from the original Modern Warfare 2 and have the feel like that and everything. It it felt like the same game before that one came out, the Modern Warfare. Yeah. And I wasn't really a fan of that one. Mm-hmm. And they didn't really have what they promised. I saw an ad for Modern Warfare 3 that had maps from Modern Warfare 2. I'm like, how does that make sense? Why right. are they taking all this from the second game in the third game when they could have done that in the second game. Right. So I, that's when I said, that's it. No more call of duties was two. And it yeah. was two. Yeah. And I thought about it for half a second because modern warfare three was free for the weekend or whatever. I was like, no, I got to stick to my guns. That's I can't get you. Not even that's if it's free. Yep. I'm good. That's how they get. And you. then exactly. Just they get your fingers on it and that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, another one is it was originally a flop. Now it's one of the greater games because it was an, uh, for game of the year and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. At least the DLC for it was, but uh, Cyberpunk. Yeah. Now we we could tell. It probably wasn't going to be that great coming out. They kept seeing the delays and stuff like that, and they just launched it anyways. And yeah. as you've said previously, like it has good bones yeah. of a game, but there was just so many glitches, so many issues with it. Like I, whenever I do go back to it, like I literally have to restart the game because I only have the one save, and I can't continue the story because the guy I need to talk to is inside a building that has the door blocked. Yeah. Yeah, that's stupid. That's crazy. I, but, I, I just had flashed to mind the, I don't know if you remember the screenshot of, because they did the delays for the for the current gen, which I guess was last gen, right? Mm-hmm. Um, And the one guy's face, it's it, it looks like a, it's just a potato. 
There's no <laughs> rendering of any detail or anything. It's just a potato. And it's like Cyberpunk 2077. I'm like, ah, oh, CD Projekt Red. What are you doing? Yeah, so I still blame the higher-ups for pushing to release it. Yeah. But I, I'm glad that they still were able to work on it and make it better, and now it's a very good game. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. why I do plan on going back to it at some point when I stop having my addiction problem, the things I'm already comfortable with. Yeah. But another one that I thought of, and it might be more personal, but it also is a lot of the community don't like it as well, but it is one of the most sold games. And I blame that on their previous games that they put out before it and it's resident evil 6 i knew it that's what i was thinking that's yeah. what i was thinking that, that almost killed it it's so much hate for that game yeah now like a lot of people say well if it wasn't a resident evil it'd be a pretty good game M- maybe you might be right i'll give you it but that is what it is it's a resident right. evil game and i barely played leon's chapter our story and i i couldn't i had i didn't want nothing to do with it and i i know from you know seeing it online and stuff like that a lot of the stories intertwine with each other so you're just doing the same stuff from a different point of view over and over again and it's more actiony than anything mm-hmm. so i'm i'm very glad they turned around and gave us what we have as resident evil 7 yeah that just brought it right back yeah that's that's a big that's a big departure there from where they were going with six to where they ended up with with seven right they had to take some inspiration and kind of rethink some things um yeah and and set it on the on the right track but you're right like that is always interesting interesting thing whether what people would say well if it was a different game or whatever it would be different and it kind of reminds me of there's like this really viral clip of like this one chef is like on an Australian news thing. And they say like, Hey, if you prepare this sandwich, like with this, it'd be more like this sandwich. And then he's like, well, what does that mean? He's like, if my grandma had will, she'd be a bike. Like, what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And it's like, it's the same thing. It's like, Oh, if it was another thing, it'd be another thing. Well, obviously, but it's this thing. Right. So, right. That's where the issue is. Right. It's not another game franchise. It's a resident evil game. That's like what it gets mad. That's what it gets compared to. That's that's all the ones I can think of thus mm-hmm. far. Yeah. No, yeah, those are those are good ones. And again, like again, like personal flops. I'm sure there's like bigger like I mentioned Anthem. Anthem was just a colossal disaster. Um and even like some people may say, like, oh, Star Starfield can be considered a flop. I don't think so. It had at one point it had like the most players of Bethesda game for a Bethesda game ever. Like, even if the reception isn't well, it, it's just a uh it's just a, mag- a matter of like when the anticipation for the game, the release of the game, and then just how quickly it just failed and any kind of interest or player base for it just dried right. up and went away. Like that's what a flop is, you know? Um, Cause like we say, like also before Anthem Bio- Bioware came out with mass effect Andromeda, which, which was pretty bad, but I wouldn't say that was a flop. It just wasn't well received. Um, so yeah, I think yeah those. But again, like I mentioned, like Unity almost killed the franchise. I think Resident Evil Six had some of that juice there. It could have really taken Resident Evil down quite a bit. So it's like right. they both had to take some time to revisit some things and relaunch the franchise in a new direction that seems to be working well. Mm-hmm. And so that's good. But eh, flops, man. And and I think I think a lot of times when we think of flops, we probably think of like these bigger games. Compared to smaller ones, because there's just less expe- less expectation, you know. Like, yeah, not trying you know, to... like indies, if they kind of flop, like, well, you know, it's an indie game. It's probably their first game, and it's, right. This this is difficult stuff to do. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, yeah. especially if it's only a one or two people team. Mm-hmm. You know, I I don't expect much from indies. Yeah. You know, not in like a, a bad sense, like, oh, yeah, they're, you know, they're trash or whatever, because we've played quite the amount of indie games and they top triple A games. Yeah. Depending, you know, it's like, like we talked about, you know, Omno and Valheim and uh, Artful Escape. Mm-hmm. Amazing games. 
Yeah, I mean, I put my 30 hours in the Final Fantasy 16, right? Mm-hmm. That's it's it's never going to even if I decided to go through and play it, it's never going to meet the 70, 80 hours I got in Valheim, right? And like, right. It just is what it is, man. And indies can be great, and there's a lot of replay value there. And you feel like you're supporting, you're really supporting someone. I put as much hours in a Final Fantasy as I did in the Thronefall, and mm-hmm. um, you know, I knew the the kind of like what's the value going forward. I felt like I can get more value out of Thronefall after 30 hours than I could out of Final Fantasy 16 after 30 hours. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. That's awesome, man. That's. That's pretty much my topic, man. The flops. People, let okay. us know. What are the flops? I'm sure. I mean, I'm surprised. We didn't list any like uh any um sports games that are flops. I mean, NBA Live 16 was an epic flop. You know, I mean, uh, you know the, pro- the problem with sports games is even if one does flop, they're just gonna have one next year anyways. Oh, yeah, it's gonna like it is not gonna affect anything. Yeah. Like it's 100%. insane because the the game that they released you know, 24 comes out and then three months later, it's a quarter of the cost because mm-hmm. they just they just know. Yep. Oh, we're, we'll have another one in six months. Who cares? Get what we can out of it. Yeah. But my topic is going to kind of be based around the same thing. And uh, I remember the game you were talking about last week, Manor Lord. Yes. Manor okay, Lords. so I I saw you you mentioned that it is the most wish list game on Steam with like it four is. million people or whatever, mm-hmm. and the creators were like, "Hey, have real expectations of this game." Yeah. All right, just you know, just it's a game get carried away. created. Yeah. Just take it with what it is. Take it easy. Just take it easy. Now. So. My question is, with all these flops that we talked about and that we missed, do you think putting out a message like that could save the harsh comments mm-hmm. of these games? Yeah, I definitely think there's there's been some games that that really needed that. Um, it kind of reminds me of, I don't know if you ever watched a Matt TV before. Matt TV? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. uh, Mo Collins, I think it was Mo Collins that had a character that was like a lady that would say "simmer down," mm-hmm. and she would walk around. She'd say "simmer down now, simmer down." I feel like that's what the creator did. <laughs> See, here's the here's the fever pitch, and he's like "simmer down now, simmer down." Um, yeah, when I think about well, one of the games uh, you kind of mentioned earlier, I felt I could have used that was uh, mm-hmm. Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, for like sure. CD Projekt Red, which was flying high off the critical and and sales acclaim of The Witcher Three. Should have mm-hmm. came in and said, "Hey, look, this is we're working on some things. We got some things going. This is really a, a, a concept moving forward. It's going to be a great, you know, a thing. But just have some expectations. This is kind of like our first time really dabbling into this space. Um, right. And it, it it would have maybe been a lot better than kind of going full on the way they did into, you know, the 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 energy around it was like this is the ultimate." This will be the ultimate iteration of video gaming as we know it. This would this will be the be all end all of gaming. And it didn't turn out to be that. It turned out to be a fairly buggy, poorly executed in some areas, but in, in essence, a, a, a pretty decent first person RPG. Um, and they built it into something great now. But I feel like putting those expect tempering expectations in the beginning could have helped them getting ran through the mud because that game oh, came yeah. out they were dragged. and it was venom it was venom against that company yeah yeah it's nasty you can kind of avoid things like that if you have the right temper the right expectations you know and i mean again uh, we'll just say it like a lot of these youtube reviewers and a lot of these news outlets they don't help with that stuff not at right all. They, they they get the hype going and they keep it up there and they kind of like amp things up so but you got to get that messaging out there and i think what the manor lords developer did was a good a good means and having people repeat that message is a good way to make sure that these four million people that wish listed your game and you're gonna maybe get what 50 75 percent of them so you know when you get done having two to three million people buy your game it's not a bunch of loud criticism, a bunch of negativity, and all of a sudden right. you've got freaking refunds flying in back and forth. And this thing that you've put all your heart and soul into was getting dragged, you know? Exactly. Like, that's kind of what happened with uh, 
cyberpunk like i know a lot mm-hmm. of people were returning and whatever it is on online yeah but, uh, yeah it was it was not good and there was a i know there's one you mentioned quite often uh no man's sky yeah like yeah that came out horrible mm-hmm. from what you've said and there was like a hey this is what this is what we got yeah that one is almost interesting because that one that one's even less of a instead of temper instead of having to temper expectations which they also could have did that they should have did that part of how they could have did that was to just not lie which That's is very true. That's, you know what, i didn't think about that yeah well, unfortunately That's, with hey, Murray be did. honest when you will go on a thing and you say that there's multiplayer in your game and there isn't, that's a lie. Even if you want it to be so, even if you're saying it to maybe will it into existence in a universe, that's not how it works. OK, I've watched The Secret. That's not how it works. <laughs> OK, you, you got to be honest when you just straight up light. It's a lie. People are like, oh, it's going to be multiplayer when it clearly isn't. Right. So, yeah, that one definitely needed tempering of expectations a lot because that game was and way 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 smaller in scope mm-hmm. in a lot of in the mechanics of it than a lot of people expected because it's so big into like there's like infinite or billion amounts of planets and it's all procedurally generated yada 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 and you think about the vastness of everything but the scope of actually what the game mechanics and what you do in it are very small it's a small indie survival game essentially so like tempering those expectations beforehand and not having to feel like people can explore this vast universe and build and go anywhere and do anything, it could have benefited from that. That, and then yeah. again, I can't... Guys, it helps anyone. If you're making a game, just don't lie about it. It helps a lot. Sean, Sean Murray, don't lie about it. And not just indies do it. Heck, one gripe I have is uh, Pete Hines, who I think was the chief marketing officer for Bethesda, lied all the time. Just don't lie. <laughs> And you're good to go, I swear. Yeah, it's not hard, you know, and you will obviously get caught. Yes. The lie is in the programming. And that's exactly what happened. He lied about multiplayer. The game drops the same day the game drops. Two players somehow end up on the same planet at the same time, and they don't see each other. And they post this on Twitter, and then Sean Murray and Hello Games has to go on Twitter and says, multiplayer is not really in the game. We never thought this would happen. Multiplayer is not really in the game. And it's like, ugh, buddy boy, what are you doing? Just don't lie. Yeah. Yeah. I I do have a question about a future release. Mm-hmm. Do you think Hellblade 2 will need this? Do you think our expectations for it are too high, or do you think it's going to hit what we're expecting because we're expecting what 1 was? Yeah, here's, a, here's what I think. I think it couldn't hurt to do it, but I also think that... Um, I think I've talked before about how I believe that the game games media has an inherent bias against Xbox and Xbox games. And it's really weird because I feel like they're probably the, the, the most like consumer and maybe journalism friendly. Um, they have like the, the least amount of predatory practices. I feel like, especially compared to Sony, but I think there's a bias. So, um, I don't think you'll get like unnecessary, like hype and stuff from games media it'll just be people that that played the game before and i don't know what i don't really don't know what what expectations that people in general have for that game i know that you and i are super excited about it Mm -hmm. um i think that the elements that i'm most excited about are the storytelling elements and that i have complete and almost certainty from like the trailers i've seen and the the diary the development diaries and all the stuff that i've watched it's going to deliver on that so i have no but it, it, yeah, it couldn't hurt, thinking. right? It couldn't hurt. It's going to be a digital only release. So some people are going to look at it sideways because of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so maybe just tempering like, hey, understand this is what this is what Hellblade Sunua sacrifices. This isn't supposed to be an action RPG. It, it It's an action game, right? There's fighting and different stuff like that. But it's more so it's almost like an like a like a action 
actiony narrative, like actiony storytelling game. I almost feel like to some extent, right? Yeah. The importance is placed so much more on our character arc and on the story in the world than it is on the action. The action and the it was action and puzzles almost feel like a, just a vehicle to tell the story. That wasn't the important part of it. Right. Um, the the trailers and stuff make it seem like they're taking more action or more action focus with it. So hey, do that because I know for a fact that this game's going to come out and then some idiot is going to compare it to God of War Ragnarok. And it's going to be a whole thing that happens like for no reason, right? They're completely different. They're the same but different. Um, right. So yeah, maybe maybe it would help to temper expectations for Hellblade. I think Xbox has to do that for maybe quite a few games just because of the bias that's out there. Temper expectations for Hellblade. Maybe temper expectations for Stalker Two. Now that's kind of a smaller game. I don't know if there'll be a lot of like, oh, you know. Um. Yeah, but I think that would help out a lot of. A lot of game developers and a lot of companies. It's just I agree. put that messaging out there. But especially yeah. like you were mentioning, like like Manor Lords, like indie developers, man, you've got to freaking like put put some expectations like in place for things, you know? Like um, like I don't know when the studio uh, Playgrounds, I mean no Play Dead, I think that did a uh, Limbo and Inside. I don't know mm-hmm. when their next game is coming out or if they've made it already. Temper expectations for it because they're going to be absurd. They're going to be expectations that you can't live up to right and right so just getting that out there or especially like the man lords this is their first game it's their first game and i believe for most of it has been a solo developer like this is the type of things that can just ruin it can build a careers it can turn you into the dude that 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 made minecraft right but it can also the the amount of pressure and anxiety and all those things can really get to you and i'm sure as excited as the developer is they probably got anxiety levels at a hundred. I couldn't even imagine. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I tell you what, we get every once in a while, we might get a review or something on here that pops for a few thousand views. And I, I, I get anxiety about it. And it's like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's so I can't imagine if you have 4 million people saying they want to buy your game when it drops. That's, that's insane. But yeah, for, I mean, it'll benefit all, all companies, all developers, big and small. Right. Um, if I was yeah. Ubisoft, I'd be tempering expectations for that Star Wars Outlaws game they got coming out with, right? Ubisoft, man. S- setting the standard for it. Because one part of the audience is like, oh, Star Wars game, this is going to be awesome. Action RP- R- RPG Star Wars game. Temper those expectations. You and I aren't in that audience. We're in the right. other half that says, oh, it's Ubisoft, this thing's going to suck, right? <laughs> so try to figure out a way. <laughs> to also get us invested, but you said it even keel. Try to get both sides, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I and going back to the Hellblade two. I I think it's gonna meet most people. At least like like you were saying, like the mm-hmm. the story looks like it's gonna be good. Like mm-hmm. you said, they focused on the story and what was in the game. Just pushed the story. It wasn't the focus, and yeah. it looks like. There is more fighting in this game based, you know, on right. like one of the trailers and stuff like that, mm-hmm. which is fine because now she's like on a completely different mission. Mm-hmm. So the story's going to be different, thus inviting us to more action, per se. Yeah. Which is totally fine. And as long as it does what the first one did, just tells us an amazing story, I, I think I think it will go over well. Yeah, I, th- I think so. too. I think I think Hellblade's in a good place. I think Hellblade's a franchise that does have a good a good kind of I guess communicated standard or idea set between the developers and the company and the people that are interested in going to buy these games. Um, Hellblade, I don't think Hellblade is a game that sells six, seven, eight million copies. I don't think that's the intent of it. I think that's partly reflected in the price of it. Um, mm-hmm. I think that it is a game that wants to give you a six to eight, possibly 10 hour, very concise, focused experience, um, which I love those yeah. games. I, those I games are I, absolutely great. I think I read it's going to be roughly eight or nine hours. Yeah. And that's all you need because it's it's dark. It is um, emotionally and mentally intense dealing with the, yeah. the dealing with the the. Um, the subject matter and the fact that, you know, Sanu was dealing with psychosis and all these different things like that. That's a lot to process 
uh, as a person. So I don't think it doesn't need to be this, you know, 17, 18 hour, 20 hour epic. It doesn't need to be that. Yeah, I agree. I I think everyone that's looking forward to it, you and I, other people that are, we understand what it is and we we think it's going to give us what we want. Mm -hmm. Very much looking forward to that. Um, So much. Just a month away. Just a month. Just a month. Super cool. Uh, Hopefully I'll be, I'll have played my share fair, my fair share of (laughs) Manor Lords and have that out the way. Mm -hmm. Um, So I can just try to dive right into that and see how far I can make it. Also though, I mean, look, the trailers weren't as scary, but they're kind of scary. So it also depends on how scary the game is. Because if it's super scary, you it's going to take a me a point. minute. Yeah. I, I can't do super scary. Um, but, but yeah, looking forward to it. Um, games, Temperex, yeah, like, yeah, for sure, like No Man's Sky. I'm trying to think if there's any other ones where, like, expectations really could have been. You know what? I will say, kind of going back to Fable, mm-hmm. but... But more so, Peter Molyneux was the game director of Fable. He was the, I believe, creative head of Lionhead Studios. So anything that guy did should have had tempered expectations. Everything he touched, <laughs> every game he did, the Fable games, black and white, the other games he did, all of them should have had tempered expectations. And that eventually became the case. We found out who this guy was, and we're like, look, it's a Peter Molyneux game. Keep your expectations in hand. Right, that that became the modus the modus operandi, right? Uh, but um, yeah, that guy, something else. If you would have did that for Fable Three, maybe it wouldn't have been a flop. Tempered oh, expectations, you know? Maybe, maybe. Then that you know that guy recently tried to create another game centered around NFTs, and it really? failed. It failed because NFTs have failed. Like they're Dude, not those really have been thing. done. Yeah. So he's like, I'm going to create a game around NFTs and NFTs falls. And he's like, oh, man. And it's like, it's like, it's almost like a sitcom. Oh, Peter, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not again, not again. That's hilarious. Yeah. Well, we got our topics out the way. I guess that leads us to final thoughts. It does. It does. Final thoughts where we offer a final thought about something that can be related or unrelated to this podcast episode so who'd like to give their final thought first i'll go all right all right so my final thought is i just want to commend you or like appreciate that you have so much knowledge of all this behind the scenes stuff with all all of this video game stuff. like you you know this James guy, you know, all of the studios and this and that and the other, like the only studio I know off the top of my head is 989 because of Twisted Model 3, 989 yeah. Studios. Like, that's it. I, I've i tried since we've started doing this podcast and stuff, but you yeah. can just go on all of these. I'm like, hey, do you know this uh, studio? You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of them. They made this game. That's it. That's crazy. And I just I appreciate that because it does not stick in for me at all i well i appreciate i i appreciate that i appreciate the kind words it's i'm becoming less adept to it because new studios are popping up left and right everyone's (laughs) everyone's rising and dying right (laughs) rising Mm -hmm. and dying so so you know for a while if you did a podcast if you did something like this 10 12 years ago what's a studio you knew volition oh i know about volition studio right and then they died well there's no volition anymore this the developers went away and they and they created 89 different studios right and i gotta try to keep track with, with all of them yeah, someone like keep track with all of them yeah, it's constantly right and now you have to think of there's so much more indie developers now so like let's try to keep a base idea there's tip you typically have the main players that you like you can remember. Well, I'm sure you like you remember um the three de- the three dev studios for Call of Duty, right? Yeah, okay. You do have a point. Just Treyarch, you know them. Infinity Ward, yeah. and uh something with a Raven. Uh the Treyarch Infinity Ward Sledgehammer? Sledgehammer. Yeah, there's Sledgehammer slash raven something or something raven. Ah, yeah, 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 those yeah. the that and sledgehammer were 
two smaller ones like infinity and treyarch were the two like big ones yeah 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 Paid right. i did have more knowledge than i remembered yeah 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 you got but, knowledge of uh you know the apex you know what's going on there fun. yeah for sure that one's a little we've talked about that one a lot so yeah you're right that one does stick yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I undermined my knowledge, but there you go. You under, undervalued yourself. Is very extended. I appreciate that. I try. Again, it's it goes harder and harder every week, every day. Very true. The, the mind just isn't as agile as it used to be. And then you combine all these other things, you know. A lot of variables. Oh yeah, tons of variables. Um, uh, let's see here. What is my final thought? What is my final thought? My final thought is that. Oh, yeah. My final thought is that I'm at it again. I'm getting games that ain't beating the ones I got. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so like, even I've listed like all the games I've listed I'm playing, they're games I've played before. I'm not beating any of my backlog. King of, Zama- of Amalur, I was on it. Right. And I got to get back to it. I got to get focused. I just got to go ahead and beat it. It's a t- under 20 hour game, I think. I just got to go ahead and focus on it and knock that out. But guess what? Your boy ain't going to be able to do that because Manor Lords drops in two days. And that's not a game you can really beat because it's a city builder strategy game. Mm. You just keep playing and playing and playing and playing and playing. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm back at it again, but I got to I got to straighten myself out. I got a plan. I'm going to give myself Manor Lords. I want to play that for a little bit and then I'm going to beat some other games in the backlog. Get rid of them. Get some other stuff. And then keep it going that way. And then eventually I'm I'm making myself beat at least two or three more games before I go and buy um, Armored Core Fires of Rubicon. And then I'll get that, play that, beat that, and then get some other stuff. I don't see, uh, see how well you follow that. Yeah, I'm just waiting for, you know, like, it's a frustration. I've realized that how rare it is to actually have a game that really grabs you, really puts its talons into you. Mm-hmm. I wish I had more games that were like Final Fantasy 16, where I'm like, I got to play this. I got to beat this. I got to experience this, you know? Yeah. It's like I, not many do it, really. The two latest ones were Hellblade and The Last of Us. Yeah. And The Last of Us is an old game at this point. Right. You know, like I played Resident Evil 7 and 8 mostly because they were Resident Evils. Mm hmm. Yeah, I wish, like, the latest, the most recent for me are going to be, what? It's going to be Final Fantasy 16, and it's going to be Ghost. And even though it's an older game, but I played it more recently, probably Spec Ops The Line. I think Spec Ops The Line is the first game I ever played and beat in, like, a day or two. Like, I used to do when I was younger. I remember playing, um, oh, man, what is it called? Uh, I forgot. I forgot. It's some shooter. Really fun shooter, I forgot. But I remember playing that game and I beat it in a day. I was just so into it. I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, let's freaking go. This thing is fun. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that I can get through some things and eventually I am going to buy Boulder's Gate. Eventually, but that's like a four thousand hour game. I gotta do that's other stuff before <laughs> I get that. I can't just dive into uh, that. So that's the plan. That's a good plan. Hope, um, that's my final thought. I think I just gave my final thought, which means we have reached the end of level 101 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and listen to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. We are on the Overcasts, great app for Apple Podcasts. You can also use Apple Podcasts. We're there. We are on YouTube Music. We are on Amazon. We are on Spotify. But listen to us there. Matter of fact, you can follow us on all the apps, maybe. Maybe you prefer one one day, one the other day. Make sure you keep up to date with us, okay? Um, you can also like and follow the podcast on the socials, like Facebook, facebook.com forward slash thoughts and players. Like it's all one word. Like TikTok at thoughts.players. Like Instagram at thoughts.players. Twitter, thought player too. And then, of course, you can subscribe and follow us on YouTube where we upload video versions of the podcast. If you want to support us, two ways you can do it. One, the merchy merch. Head to our Teespring store. Pick yourself up a phone case or a shirt. I found my shirt. I got to put I it did. on. But I found nice. it. Nice. Actually, actually, my partner found it. I didn't know where it was at. 
Uh, you can also support us by going to our Patreon, where we have three tiers, a two, a five, and seven dollar tier, each offering a bunch of different goodies. Um, next for all Patreon levels will be the episode two of the um, Game Dev Tycoon playthrough. Um, and I think for the highest tier, we're going to release the Lost Episode 99. So we'll check that out there. It should be, we'll be there within the week or so. Um, but yeah, that is it for me. David, is there anything you would like to add? Peace. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. And we will catch you on the next level.